Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLRVideoShooter.com and today we are going to talk about acoustic treatment for shooting video. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time. It's been one of the um, most sound altering things I've done to any studio I've worked in and it makes such a big difference. So I wanna talk about acoustic treatment today and I'm gonna start by talking about the difference between soundproofing and acoustic treatment. They are completely different things. Soundproofing completely blocks sound from going to a different space. Um, it's very expensive to do properly. So for me, it just wasn't possible to soundproof this space. So to stop sound from entering from upstairs or different rooms, as well as from sound leaving this space and going to those other spaces. So that's soundproofing, which is not really what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about acoustic treatment, different types of acoustic treatment. And acoustic treatment is very simply um, altering how sound travels in a space. So we're not stopping it from entering or leaving a space, but we are affecting how it reacts within a space or a room. Now I did say we're not gonna be talking about soundproofing, but having really good acoustic treatment will almost give you a soundproofing effect. For example, this space uh, historically is very bad. Here's a quick clip from before I treated this space. So that is how I got that strobe look using one light with a battery in a dark room. It's really simple and uh, kind of a cool effect to kind of keep in the back of your mind as you're doing various projects. So that compared to what you're hearing now, big difference. And uh, it's just using fairly affordable acoustic treatment. What you probably don't know is right over there, there's a door leading to a furnace or utility room. Right now the furnace is on full blast and I'll stop talking. You might be able to hear it, but it's probably pretty minimal. So I've got that furnace room, doors open, furnace is blasting, there's duct work above me, um, but you really can't hear it, or if you can hear it, it's so low that you're not gonna hear it over my voice and this video. So even though it's not soundproofing, um, acoustic treatment makes a big difference. You know, I can hear that furnace very clearly from here, but this microphone isn't going to pick it up because of the way sound travels. Speaking of how sound travels, we need to quickly go over how sound travels in a space. Uh, this is a rectangle shaped room and all the walls are flat. There's other objects in here, but for the most part, it's just walls and a concrete floor and a wood ceiling. So if we're talking about a person making sound or speaking, when sound leaves my mouth, it's going to go out, hit each of those walls. And when it hits that wall, it's going to just slap straight back and hit the microphone. And that's where you get um, very microscopic delays as well as longer delays and the human ear um, is slightly confused and doesn't like that sound. So what we wanna do is kill those uh, reflective sounds. So the only sound we wanna hear picked up on this microphone is when my voice goes straight to it and goes to the camera. We don't wanna hear anything else. So that's where acoustic treatment comes in. And there's really two different types of acoustic treatment that we're gonna focus on. The first is absorption, so absorbing sound, and the second is diffusion, or diffusing sound. Diffusion, essentially when sound hits it, instead of slapping straight back, there's a material or a pattern of materials that when that sound hits it, instead of one continuous slap back, it's going to break it into several small little sounds that'll bounce around. And by the time they reach the microphone, they're very weak. Um, so it will add a more lively sound to the room, which when you're playing piano or certain instruments is a good thing. You don't want a completely dead room. Um, but for stuff like this, where there's just vocals um, and it's dialogue, it's not singing, uh, having absorption is a better way to go, in my opinion. So absorption, essentially, when that sound hits a wall or a ceiling or objects, um, it absorbs the sound and you don't get slapped back or it's incredibly minimal. And that's what's going on in this space. For the actual materials, I'm using a combination of uh, different absorption panels. So these are just foam. Um, they're not just standard foam you'd find in a mattress. Uh, you don't wanna buy cheap foam or foam that's used like those, those egg crate foam. That's borderline useless compared to this stuff. So I've been using a combination of 
12 by 12 and 24 by 24 inch panels. And these are two inches thick. So they go from the back to the tip of this uh, channel here is two inches. And I found that two inches is kind of the minimum. If I had more money when I did the acoustic treatment here, I probably would have gone with four inches. Um, it's gonna cost more obviously, but I would stay away from one inch. One inch doesn't really give you much of, a, of an effect, but two inches has worked really well for me. Another material I've used to absorb sound are these producer choice sound blankets. I bought these before I got the wedge foam and I actually use these to do some soundproofing. So what's cool about these is they are incredibly absorptive, so they will absorb sound really well, but they also block a lot of sound, not completely soundproofing, but they block a lot of sound. At my old studio downtown, I had very noisy neighbors, crazy thin walls. I don't think they had any insulation in the building. So putting up a bunch of these big eight by eight sheets uh, was really helpful. It's pretty affordable material. This one I cut open and it's essentially um, moving blankets on steroids with uh, a different material and much more of it in between the layers. So on a budget, uh, this stuff's great. It's also great because it's black. The, you can buy it with a black or white side or both. And I use that, um, which we'll go around the studio and look at here in a second, on the side because I can just hang it from the ceiling and uh, make sure it's not touching the floor since I'm in a basement. Um, and it works really, really well. So if you don't wanna have to affix this stuff to the wall, um, this is a fantastic option. And you can buy different packs, different sizes. We'll have links in the description to that stuff. So two different options for absorbing sound in a space. Now we're going to walk around and look at where I've placed this treatment and uh, kind of get a feel for where you could place it in a studio. All right, so I am sitting roughly where my camera is. You can see right there, there's the stool that I sit on for my videos. And let's address the acoustic treatment on the back wall first. So here it is, and it is all two inch wedge foam. Um, to mount this, I didn't want to mount to the wall since behind, we'll take a look here at this disgusting wall. You'll notice um, there's, you know, my power panel back there, um, some plumbing and electrical. So what I did is just mounted this temporary wall, if you will. So I can actually push it and it's just kind of hanging by a bunch of S hooks with chain. And to do this, I just took a bunch of this half inch or three quarter inch uh, foam board that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, used liquid nails to attach the foam and it is removable. You could also use Velcro. I found that Velcro doesn't really hold up super well, which you can see down here, it kind of fell off. And then the only other thing I did was on the back, since there's a channel back here, I went ahead and used um, a sheet of that Producer's Choice sound blanket stuff. Um, the reason I did that was sound is going to get back here and I don't want it turning into a giant trumpet and just the sound bouncing back and forth. So if any sound does get back here, this blanket is going to kill it right away. So that's the first bit of acoustic treatment and that is obviously on the back wall, makes a big difference. And now if we look up here at the ceiling, behind the microphone, which is right there on the ceiling, I built two of these clouds, if you will, or ceiling panels. These panels were constructed the same way that the back wall was. It's that uh, three quarter inch foam stuff. I just use liquid nails to affix the uh, wedge panels and these are 12 by 12 panels. Um, and then I put a channel in the center to fill up the gap. The reason I put the panels above the microphone is a lot of the sound will be killed right there since I'm right below it. And the other reason is if you look at a pickup pattern for a shotgun microphone, the microphone picks up mainly audio from the front of the microphone, but it also picks up a lot from the back of the microphone. So whatever that part of the microphone is picking up is instantly killed because I have these panels on the back. To attach this panel to the ceiling, I just used four chains and uh, I had a little strip of wood that I attached to the foam board. That way I can go ahead and mount the chain to it. The whole setup's really light, so I'm not worried about it falling down. And then finally for acoustic treatment, I have one of those producer choice sound blankets on this side wall, if you will. Um, again, it's just mounted to the ceiling with chain. You can see that there. 
and it does an amazing job with killing sound that's floating around the room. I do have it pretty far from the wall, just as close as I can get it to me. I will be building some rolling storage cabinets and putting this stuff or some kind of foam on the face. That way I can take advantage of that space between the wall and where I shoot. You'll notice on this back wall, I had to make a couple cuts of that 24 by 24 inch panel stuff. And the best way to do that I have found is to pick up one of these Black & Decker or a different brand um, meat cutters. I think they're used for uh, delis or you know, carving up a turkey and uh, it just plugs into the wall. And this thing just cuts so beautifully through that foam. You can get nice straight cuts and uh, no fraying or anything. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of this foam wedge stuff, make sure you pick one of these up. So there you have it. That is a quick overview on acoustic treatment, more specifically using absorptive panels and materials to absorb sound in a space. Uh, a couple of thoughts before we close here. First, I'm talking about shooting videos and specifically dialogue stuff like this. If you're a YouTuber talking to a camera or doing interviews, this is a great way to go and is really going to help. And also keep in mind, this is in a recording environment. We're not in a playback environment. So my editing suite is completely laid out differently. There is an insane amount of science that goes into figuring that out, but it is straightforward if you have time to read about it. And uh, definitely make sure you check the description. There's two fantastic resources I've found for figuring out placement, the type of material to use, and uh, just a great way, lots of budget tips. Um, so fantastic stuff, speaker placement. And the reason you wanna have your playback area treated is so that you can hear exactly what is going on in your video with music and dialogue. That way, when you ship it out and people watch it on their laptops, iPhones, home theater systems, um, they're not gonna hear extreme. So as an example, if you shoot a whole film and do the sound editing on your laptop, you may boost the bass because you're not hearing the bass, so you boost it up. Then some guy pulls up your film on his TV and he can barely hear anything over just the booming bass. So you wanna have a very natural editing environment or playback environment. So that's a whole nother thing. Check out the resources below. I'll also link to all the materials that I've purchased, where I purchased them, mostly from the Foam Factory, which you'll find in the description. And uh, you can check that stuff out there. They have different thicknesses. Again, go with two inches or thicker for your panels. This is wedge foam, but they also come in like a diamond foam setup. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, Acoustic treatment has been one of the best things I've done to the studio. So that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to catch more videos here on DSLR Video Shooter. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.